Hey y'all, Andrew Reed, Mossy Creek Mushrooms. Uh, and today, I just wanted to announce this, uh, well, it's my dream project, and it's going through Patreon, so <laughs> let's just talk Patreon for a moment, I guess. Um, any tier of Patreon will get you access to the Discord, and then we have different tiers that get you different rewards, including one where uh, we send out a piece of Samantha's artwork that is specifically tailored more for, like, advertising purposes for use around in your farm those kinds of things um I, i've seen her working on some cool stuff that's coming up so you know expect to and on that if you're on that tier expect to have those designs coming out on the regular we have, even have uh you know like a pretty significant discount off our website so if you're planning on you know buying a lot of strains then you might support us for a couple of months use that discount to, to get in and then you know hopefully you keep supporting us after that just because you like the content <laughs> all of this said there's a new tier added to patreon it is the highest tier on there it is called the evolution pit the evolution pit is a starcraft reference um i was a zerg player basically all this means is you've got you've got three races a high-tech race called the protoss you've got the humans who are kind of in between the two um and then you have Zerg, which are like full body, entirely organism based. Their ships are living. Everything about them is alive, including their buildings, that kind of stuff. The Evolution Pit is a building. And it's literally just where you go to upgrade your creatures and change the strains. But it's where a character called Abathur lives. And Abathur is one of my favorite characters from a game uh, at any point. Uh, he literally just weaves new strands of DNA into new creatures, collects DNA from the wild and brings it in and then continues to uh, mix it up and, you know, make unique little creatures for the swarm, for the Zerg. So, <laughs> and of course, I've always had an affinity for Abathur because this is the kind of work I like doing, obviously. Now, on to my dream project. The reason why this is my dream project, um, I have dreamt about this since, I don't know, it's like 10 years or more Ever since I just, this, it just really took me. Uh, seeing Paul Stamets going in like to old growth forest and trying to save different uh, species of, you know, agaricon, basically. The agaricon fungus is, is what he's going in and um, biopsying and then growing so that uh, we have unique antivirals and medicines and things like that. I want to do the same thing for everything, but my particular flavor is oysters. And we've got old growth forest even here in East Tennessee. There are trees that are older than since when white man set foot on the continent. I want to go up there and do a little bioprospecting. See this, there's supposed to be a tulip poplar, you know, up above the chimneys that is, you know, bigger than what nine to, I don't remember how many people they said, you know, trying to link arms around it. They couldn't, they couldn't link arms around it. Trees more than like 500 years old or something like that. I would love to see you know, somebody go up to these old growth forests and save some of these strains that are locked away in the mountains. Um, but beyond this comes, beyond bioprospecting, which is the collecting of wild strains to bring into culture, we also, which, you know, if you've got an area that's about to be logged or something, it's great to go in there and just clone everything you can and save those genetics. Because who knows what kinds of things are being wiped out during the logging process or during burns or anything else. Now, Beyond this comes in a very unique idea or unique uh, opportunity in that we're already breeding oysters here at a lightning fast pace, which is why I'm having to la hire a lab crew right now. Um, this, we've got so many strains, we can't possibly handle them all. Um, and this is in part because of the breeding program and in part because of the bioprospecting program. Now we also have the bioprospecting program bringing in genetic information, which we can then exchange with the domestic information that we already have, the cultivated information, commercial strains. And we've just done our first few wild crosses where they, we are crossing wild with domesticated species. So the King Blue is being crossed with the Old Road. And the Old Road was an old mushroom that Ben and I found on one of our first bioprospecting trips. And... We're now crossing that with King Blue. We still have the original Old Road. Those genetics are still, you know, the, the same as what they ever were. Um, but we're also able to collect spores from these and then breed into new things and see what's what. Like, we don't even know what's going to happen yet. So beyond saving genetic information, 
we could also pull that genetic information to breed into the cultivatable side, the the commercial side, and bring out new strains. This is just a mind blowing dream to me. Just the the sheer amount of work that needs to be done, and who knows what rewards lie through it. Even if we just save a few strains, that's reward enough. But we're already seeing massive improvement in strain quality over the past 10 years. Even even just for our op, like when we're breeding these new strains, we're getting all kinds of new phenotypes, you know, things, crazy, crazy things that grow. Hold on, dogs. Um, so now what this tier is, the evolution pit tier is in the syndicate, is really it's a beta testing slot, right? You are coming in to get early access to strains, strains that are not listed. Psst, that's enough, dog. Um, early access to these strains, and then these strains, you have the rights to them. You sell them, you do whatever you want with them. Um, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to get mad at you if you do any of that stuff, right? Like you, like Number one, you buy the strain from me. You, know, you, you own that particular strain that you got right not the whole strain you just own that bit of genetics you've got and you're growing out <laughs> so don't come at me but uh, but that said you get early access of course you know nobody's going to fight you on the rights if you want to sell liquid culture of it you sell liquid culture of it if you want to do anything else that's fine there are um you know you want to grow out the mushrooms and sell those you, you do that all you want it, it basically comes down to you know there are some requirements there's some feedback requirements we need We'll talk about that in a second. But really what it comes down to is it gets you early access to strains that we've already thought may be commercially viable, to wild strains that are unique to whatever region they're coming from. Um, the money, where the money goes, because it is an expensive tier, I'll tell you where the money's going. It's going into plates. It's going into the lab technician position to, you know, basically pay Abathur's wages. <laughs> but uh, um, to fund bioprospecting trips to further the breeding program and allow us to do even more of that to administrate all of the data collection um, and then doing videos and everything else on releasing all of this so it's it's a pretty exciting program to me to be a part of um, and uh, I'm just I don't I don't really know I just this this program is exactly for the kind of people who are interested in the genetic side who are interested like this gets you into the commercial testing of these strains and then that's just after that, you're going to start voting with me, right? We'll go on the Patreon. We'll have meetings, you know, regularly a little bit later down the road where we're going to talk about, okay, we like this strain. We like, you know, all, all this stuff um, about this particular strain. Um, for example, I'll just kind of run through it. $25 a video is what the, the tier is at. Um, the data sheets and because the, the liquid culture, it'll ship in the form of liquid culture but you also get data sheets with it. They'll ship out about the second week of every month um, because that just allows us to make sure that people's cards are charged and the Patreon is, is supported. Then it gives us a report during the first week of the month on who gets these syringes. Then we decide which strains we're doing. We pull those, we send you the data sheet, the liquid culture. This will start the second week of March, by the way, of 2022. Um, what you'll do is you'll grow those strains out um, we're not we're planning on having a time requirement, so you can kind of do it as you want. We're also not having a number requirement. If you want to grow, get it and just do it as a hobbyist and just do one or two blocks, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. We're going to have multiple people doing this, so we'll have notes from everywhere. Um, so you grow it out. You fill out the data. Um, you There will be yield data. There will be spawn run time. Um, it's very basic, very basic information. And then a section for subjective notes, like this mushroom tasted this way. This mushroom was really hard to pick off the block. I didn't like it. This mushroom was amazing. And it was so, it yielded so much and was so easy to harvest and held together when I put it in a box. I like this string, you know, that kind of thing. Um, then I'll need photos. And usually we ask for three photos when we get a new strain. You'll do, one is, um, you know, from the front, one is from the side, one is from 
underneath where you can see the gills. And then, uh, you know, oftentimes I like to have a nice fourth photo of step back and in its environment, even if that's in your grow room, kind of gives me an idea of what your grow room looks like. And of course, I would love video, of course, if, if anybody can get me video of them picking or, you know, anything else that'd be helpful because we could maybe even use your footage um, and we will credit you, for, of course, in the strain videos themselves. And of course, we'll be crediting the Patreon program um, at the Evolution Pit level for the maintaining of these strains and the collection of these strains and the production. So then after we do that, um, we at Monster Creek Mushrooms will take everybody's data, everybody's um, subjective notes and everything else. We'll decide uh, with you guys and through a vote system, probably a poll on, on uh, uh, Patreon or maybe just a private you know, messaging, we'll take that data. But we will collect this data and go yeah, well, this is slated for breeding in the future. This is slated for further commercial testing. Uh, this strain is, yeah, we want to see it. We want to see it bred with this or this. Or you know what? Actually, the strain wasn't all that good after all. Why don't you put it in cold storage and we'll deal with it later? We'll, you know, we'll do all that. And of course, if we put it in cold storage, your sample doesn't have to go in cold storage. If you liked it, even though everyone else in the program didn't, that's fine. Keep growing it. Keep selling it. Keep pushing it. And then, you know, show people. Like, I've been proven wrong. I, I was going to put Cool Touch away before Jesse Campbell told me he loved that strain of Missing Meadows Mushrooms. And he was telling me that, uh, actually, he loved that strain. It was the perfect kit, kit oyster. And I retried it before um, dumping the strain. And he was right. It was worth growing. Um, so, I mean, I just, we started growing it again and added it to the program. So, now... You know, I can imagine being like, who is this for? You know, it's kind of a niche thing. And I really, it's just, it's for people who want early access, people who want to help us save strains. We're planning trips to old growth forest. Um, we're planning trips to different areas in, uh, around us. I'm hoping even other people in the program will maybe even go collect and then send us the samples, um, you know, from their geographical ranges. Then we can start collecting new genetics from, you know, Florida, Michigan, California, Tennessee, Ohio, Minnesota, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe even Alaska and Hawaii, if people can send this stuff out to us. And we can really create some cool things. My lovely wife came in. Um, hello. Uh, it, you know, so there's the, the opportunity to save genetics, especially like if I find out there's an area that's about to be burned down or uh, cleared by logging, I'm absolutely planning on, you know, trying to get out there and collect as many fungal samples as I can. Um, we'll eventually branch out into more than just oysters, but oysters are where we're going to start because that's where the money's at right now. And uh, it's the same, it's basically all of us, whether you're selling the strain, the mushroom, the grain spawn, whatever, it allows us to all really focus on something that will pay us but have an ROI at first and then we can use that to fund going in further into you know I want the violet tooth polypore in culture because I think that's going to be a really cool staining fungus but I also think it's going to do you know a lot of other cool things perhaps with mycomaterials um you know this is um for anyone who wants to have a say in my breeding program honestly if you I know there's a lot of people out there that are hardcore mossy creek mushrooms culture purchasers right you guys grow our strains and you like our strains well this is your chance to have a say in the breeding program right to come in and actually vote and to take you know i like this i want to see more of this i want those fat bottoms you know fat stems um <laughs> check um and so really what it comes down to guys is we want you to help us save new strains and create new strains for future commercial cultivation. Um, <laughs> there's really not much more to it, guys. This is really exciting to me. I've been wanting to do this project. I've, I've attempted it two or three times on my own. And for the first time, I feel like we've actually got a crew that's going, whether it's through YouTube, Discord, and Patreon, um, and the Facebook syndicate. Like, we actually have enough people now and people with skill levels now that i really think that we can pull this off i really think that we can get into the saving of wild genetics the bioprospecting of them and the creation of new strains for commercial cultivation in mass 
And because we're, what little bit of work we've done has only scratched the surface, but it's totally overwhelmed us. It's a good chance to bring in other people. I just, I can't test this many strains this quickly. I don't, we got like almost 300 cultures in liquid culture right now. And about half of them are still needing to be commercially trialed. But because I have to focus so much on the farm, I don't have a chance to, I, I test slowly. And this is a chance for me to get testing done much quicker and you guys get that early access and everything else. So please join me in this project. I highly look forward to working with you guys. And as always, and this just means even so much more to me now, keep spawning culture, y'all. Take care.